Hey everybody, uh, welcome to May's sampler block. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. What we're gonna do today is we are going to make some flying geese that go with this block. And there's many ways to make flying geese, but um, this is the technique we're gonna do today. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a large square and then you're gonna have some smaller squares. Um, this happens to be the background square, and I'm going to mark a diagonal line on the back side of all my background squares. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up, draw a diagonal line. All right, so here's my main square again, and I'm going to take this square and I'm going to put it in the corner, exactly in the corner, and I'm going to pin it there. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. Um, I'm going to pin this little square into the big square's corner. So this is what it looks like right now. And now I'm gonna take another square and I'm gonna pin it in the opposite corner. So as this block is facing me, it's the one that's closest to me, I'm gonna pin that. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Two squares pinned in opposite corners and the diagonal line is going this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides of this marked line. Um, and whatever direction I sew first, I want that square. So if I start, oh, I'm gonna do it here. If I start here and sew down, I want this top square to be on top of this bottom one as opposed to this bottom one being on top it just flows easier if it if this piece the square is on top um, you'll see when you get there so I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides of that mark line let me do that I've sewn on one side. <clears throat> now I'm going to sew on the other side. Again, quarter inch from that marked line. it. I've sewn on both sides and now I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut it right on that mark line. So let me get a ruler and my rotary cutter. Yikes. Don't you hate it when that happens? So here is my, are my two um, halves, and I'm going to press this. And so when I press it, I'm going to press it so the little triangles go up, okay? So first I'm going to press it flat. And then I'm going to press it, the little triangles up, and it's going to look like a heart. I'll show you what I mean. And be careful you don't distort anything. You don't want to stretch anything. So this is what I have. OK, 
Okay, and since I have two halves, I need to do the same thing with the other side. I need to press it. So here's one of them. And so on each of these, I'm going to take a marked square, put it in that corner. I'm going to show you in a minute uh, and pin it. So it looks like this. I'm going to do it with both of them. I'm going to get this one ready too. So now that I have this pinned in place, again, I'm going to sew a quarter inch on both sides of that mark line. I'm going to sew on the other side of that marked line. So I'm going to cut these apart and take out the pins. I've sewn on both sides of the marked line and now I'm going to cut on the marked line. one I'm going to cut on the marked line. Okay. And then I'm going to press. I'm going to press towards that, um, that little triangle. So by using this technique you get four identical half square triangles. I mean um, blind piece. There's one. the rest of these. What's nice about this method is it's uh, no waste. So you have no scraps left over. Just you have exactly what you need. So on here, there are some um, little bits sticking up on the ends, and I'm just going to trim those off. You can use scissors. Um, I like a rotary cutter, but you do whatever is um, easiest for you. Trim 
this one too. All right, so um, I just realized I don't have the microphone, so I hope you all can hear me. All right, so now I'm gonna sew these together so they're all pointing up. I'm gonna sew all four, so they're all pointing up. So I'm sewing them in pairs, and then I'm going to sew the pairs together. thread either. Let's see if we make it. This one too. Okay, so here are my two halves and I'm gonna sew the two halves together. And to me, it doesn't matter which side you have up. Um, I do like the ends where my fingers are. I do like the ends to meet. Um, so if you need to pin it, uh, to make sure it meets at the end, um, you can do that or um, pin, hold it or pin it. Right, so four in a row, that's what we want. And then I'm just gonna take um, one of these and put it on both sides. So let me go ahead and do that. And if there's a right side, you want the right side up, I can't tell the difference, but I don't think it really matters. So I'm gonna sew this, making sure my ends meet by ends, I want it to meet here, and I want it to meet down here.
press it to the side. That's gonna look so good. I'm gonna put this on the opposite side. if there's a right or an up or down on the turtles because they swim in all directions. I don't think it matters. Just gonna put this on the opposite side and then we are gonna be done. So let me get this sewn. Hopefully I have enough bobbin thread. A little bit of thread but it's not cooperating. Okay, let's try this again. This is how the block looks and just to look at the back real quick um, when I pressed the flying geese together I pressed it towards the bottom of the flying geese um, I find if I press it towards this pointy point there's just too much too much bulk there and it's easier if you go towards the bottom of the flying geese so my seams are being pressed this way and then when I added the sides I pressed out to the side because then it lays really nice and flat Okay, all done. I hope you can hear me because I don't have the mic. Sorry about that. And thanks. Bye.